What is up guys and gals? Space Unicorn here bringing you some hot frag action. So today guys is the video you guys have been waiting for. It's how to build a winning deck as of update 1.7.4. So this is going to be the newest version of how to build a winning deck. We're going to break it down for you. Basically exactly what's going on in my head whenever we're talking about building a winning deck. There's Really, honestly, you can throw cards together all you want, but you're going to find that winning decks are formatted in a very similar fashion, and I'm going to go through that with you. But first, I need you guys to do me a huge favor. I need you to like, comment, and subscribe on the video. We are at 6,000 subscribers, which is a mind-blowing number. And truthfully, I just I can't thank you enough for the support. That is why this video is coming out, because this video is taking me forever to make. Now, that being said... Let's dive into how to build a winning deck. Zombie apocalypse. Alrighty guys, so I have put random cards up the top. Um, yeah, just a bunch of random cards, truthfully. Um, so. I've also done some things so you guys can physically see what I'm doing. Now, the first thing that you need to know whenever you're trying to build a winning deck is you have to understand meta. Meta stands for most efficient tool available or basically the best cards for the situations that you run into in the game. Of which we right now are very lucky to have 10 meta cards. Meta cards, as I stated, most efficient tool in the game. Realistically, there is only 10 of these. So you guys are probably thinking, 86 cards with only 10 meta cards? What the? That's exactly what I'm saying, man. But I will show you the 10 meta cards and I'll explain to you how they kind of fit into the niche. Now I've organized my cards here a little bit so you guys can kind of see um, what we're doing here. I've broken down the cards into four groups for you so you guys can visibly see what I'm doing here and how I'm explaining this to you. Now, the meta cards are these 10 cards right in front of you. You have Lucha Muerta, Andromeda, BB, Blot, The Boss, Ronin, Hannibal, Queen Unicorn, Duncan, and Cypher. All these cards fit the roles in Frag. As you guys know, there are five, well, you guys know what I mean. There's five roles in Frag. You have your camps, your defense, your attack, your wild cards, and your centers. All these cards come from all those sections, except for center. That's just a big one for you guys to keep in mind. Center cards are not meta cards right now. Sorry. But the reason these cards are meta is because they do something special. It can be anything unique. In BB's case, for instance, BB has the ability to heal and really falls into this cancel meta that's going on right now. He can heal your cards, get rid of negative effects on him, and keep himself alive through most of the damages. Lucha is just a tanky boy. Most health in the game keeps him in meta talks non-stop. Andromeda. Andromeda is the best slayer in the game. No card, when played perfectly, is going to outduel Andromeda besides somebody who might surprise you, and that being Duncan. Duncan and Andromeda are actually very, very similar cards. If you look at it from a statistical standpoint, they're almost identical. That's why they're both in meta, and actually most people are going to run a Duncan over Andromeda right now. But I digress. Blot, because of his massive tower damage, is meta. The boss, the ultimate ability, and the defensive prowess this card has is really, really good. And it's only second if Queen Unicorn has her frag power. This card is fantastic. Wild card Ronin, another great card. Why is he meta? He's fast. He has a slash dash glitch right now. He's just a overall pain because he gets to your opponent's side of the field super, super quickly. Hannibal, another tanky card, but with the ability to really do damage to characters, Hannibal finds himself on this list. Uh, Queen Unicorn, second best, maybe the best defensive player in the game. I do have her frag power, and she's my card, so, you know. Cypher is also on this list, even after the nerf, guys. The reason is Cypher's ultimate ability is so stinking good. There's no denying how good his ultimate ability is. So this is your first class of cards. These are the meta cards. They all play, or some, play into each other pretty well, and you guys can kind of get a feel for it. Now, let's move down the list. The next group of cards we have are the cards that are outside of meta. 
Um, now, one or two of these cards is in this list because the ultimate, the uh, the frag power that they got has pushed them into this. Those cards are Van Doom, Medusa, Cleo, so Jackie Chan, Rippin' Finn, Soldier Tron, Hakairu, Tank Bot, Sombrero, and Duality. Duality is really good, guys, if you can t understand how to use the weapon switches. These cards are really good, and putting these cards in your lineup usually is not a bad thing. Usually. Now, let's move on to the next cast of facial cards. These are just your good cards. These are good cards. They're fun to play. They can be a little everything. You have your Arkans, your Strikers, your Shinobis, your Pokas, Vandals, Desper, Prisoner 99, Fragman, Ollie, um, Bobber, Queen Boom, Hades. Even Virus makes a case for this. Cactrina, Hunter, Dr. Crow, General Mech, Roloff, Frost, and Lollipop. JB is also in the section, but he is in the top of my list right now. Um, now, with that being said, that gives you 50 cards that are playable in the game of Frag. Everyone else, all these people down here, there, there's a couple of them that are kind of teetering on the edge of being okay cards to play, like Giga Gnu. Um, Mechalodon could probably make the cut in the right hands. Uh, Big Paku's another one, and Crystal, which just makes me sad. Um, but you'll notice that basically half the cards in Frag are actually playable. Now, those are the classifications of cards we are going to use. Now guys, I paused the video here because there's something else that you guys need to know. It is important to understand how these cards work together. This is something that comes along with understanding how each card plays individually, and you know which cards go best with which cards. Example's sake, just for plain example, BB combos really well with Hannibal and Lucha and Blot. Duncan combos really good with a Queen Unicorn. Sombrero combos very good with a High Slayer card, i.e. Andromeda. Just an example of understanding those cards. Let's get back into the video. The next thing we're gonna do, guys, now that you kinda understand what the meta cards are, what the cards that are outside of meta are, like keep in mind that outside of meta means that they're very good. They're better than your average card, which is a good card, but they're not quite meta cards. So realistically, whenever you are building a lineup, so if you're gonna build a lineup, there's a couple things you want. First of all, your defense, you want one, at least one, meta defender of which we have three we have queen unicorn right here duncan and the boss my personal favorite is queen unicorn so we're going to put her in our lineup she is a strong defensive fallback no matter the situation and i love playing her like i said my card slightly biased but that's my personal opinion a lot of players will take the boss nothing wrong with that now one thing I strongly recommend is that you understand how frag lineups are built here. There is realistically two ways to build a winning team composition. Number one, you run a 1-4. A 1-4 means you have one defensive card and you have four attack cards. Defensive cards are camp cards and defense. Center cards are not defensive cards. Sorry. They kind of fall into a weird spot. Um, but defense and camp cards are the only defender style characters so with queen unicorn i'm going to actually put duncan in now as i stated before duncan is going to give me the ability to kind of throw some people off he can slay like andro and has infinite ammo he is very very good now next thing we're going to do here guys is we're going to be thinking all right i need an offense so we figured out our defense your defense is so so important so that's gonna be the first thing you want to do whenever you're building your team comp i am going to be building a 3-2 here and then a 4-1 to show you guys what it would look like but the first thing you want is a strong defense without a defense you will not win games consistently unless your card levels are maxed out and you're just that have such a card advantage because a good player is going to come back and they're going to play defense on you and if you have no defensive fallback you will find yourself on your heels very quickly once your push dies now, the next thing I think about is offensively. Offensively, you want a lineup that, number one, you need to cancel character. Cancel characters in the game right now. BB, Cypher, excellent style cancel characters. Rippin Finn actually technically falls into a cancel role because of his ultimate ability being able to hit off an entire push. Um, so you could put Rippin Finn in here. 
if you were to choose so. And he falls into that just outside of meta roll, so he is still a very good card. But in my particular situation, I'm going to put BB in. That self-heal is second to none. It is incredibly useful and valuable for you being on the attack. The ability to negate your opponent's damage and basically say, Ha, hey, you thought you were going to kill my tank? Get out of here with that. Now, that's going to move us into the second part of building an offensive group. You need a tank. Now, most people are going to... Well, there's, realistically, there's only two cards you're going to use for this. You're going to use Lucha Boy or Hannibal. Personally, I am a Lucha fan, mostly because I've been playing the game for so long. Lucha is a meta card, always has been. Realistically, even with the addition of Hannibal, he was still a meta card. Hannibal is very, very good, but Lucha Boy is... I just prefer him. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at here and I need to think. So, I've got my defense figured out. I've got my cancel card figured out. I've got my tank. Now, what do I need? Well, here's where it gets interesting. This fifth pick, whenever you're building a 3-2, is really up to you. It can be whatever you want. Personally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a pseudo tank. Um, I refer to pseudo tank. Pseudo, a good example of a pseudo tank is Blot. Blot is an excellent example of a pseudo tank. BB is also a pseudo tank, technically because of the heal ability. Um, but Blot, uh, Ronin can be, Tank Bot can be because his ultimate ability adds health. These are great cards that kind of add those roles of a pseudo tank for you. They have the ability to basically negate the damage that's being issued onto them. Uh, Ronan, due to his slash dash, can get out of any situation if he so chooses. Um, and Blot Mag has that ink form, which is so incredibly annoying. So, with that being said, this would be an excellent 2 3 build. I meet the qualifications of a good lineup. And once again, let me just tell you the qualifications for a good lineup a good defense. A negating character, BB in this case, could have used Cypher, but I'm going to use BB. You can even use them both if you really choose to. A good tank character, and then the fifth card in my this personal lineup is going to be a meta card. Now, with this lineup, you can actually switch cards around. As you guys know, we listed the meta cards. We listed those cards that are just outside of meta. These cards that are just outside of meta can be put in. For example, let's say you're playing Payload. Tankbot's AI on Payload is exceptional. If you're playing tunnels sombrero also has a very high combo potential allowing him to be very useful rip and fin is another one who can be put in for any of these cards minus your defense it is important to remember that if you're going to replace a defensive card in this case my queen unicorn or duncan that you replace it with either with the defensive card you need to have at least one defender and if you're going to run one defender it has to be queen unicorn on the boss otherwise you need to run two it's that simple now i know what you guys are thinking so jackie chan should be on there i so jackie chan is not on there for one reason and one reason only the reason she is not meta is because she's not good on both maps the meta cards are good on both maps they're good in any situation and can be thrown into anything so what we have done now guys is we have built ourselves a three two and we're going to hop into a match, and we're going to see, can the 3-2 get the W? So what we're going to do, guys, I will cut to that match, show you guys the video, show you guys the match, and I'll show you guys how it went. Uh, so give me one minute while we hop into that match. We have hopped into this match. Now what you're going to see here, my opponent actually has a meta lineup in as well. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start on a defensive side. Now, something that is super important, you can't just understand that the and pause boys so there's two primary ways to play a match in frag way number one is you rush the towers this is where you're building your lineup this is determined by how you build your lineup the second thing you can do is spawn control spawn control is hugely advantageous if your cards are lower level this is how you beat those higher level opponents by controlling what cards come out of their spawn and getting rid of the ones you don't want as quickly as possible i.e the best way to do it is to do a little bit of both play a little spawn control and play a little bit of rushing this is where your build shines cards uh, that you put into a situation are going to do x y and z while this is important it is not going to be the only way to do it as you guys are seeing right now i pushed my queen unicorn up to basically cause chaos that's what she's doing that's what she's for 
He's doing a great job of it. Now we're going to take the BB. We're going to push him up here, and we're going to negate all that damage that just happened to my Blot and my Lucha. As you guys can see, these guys have healed. We are now going to issue this command. It's all right. I don't know what that desync was that we saw there, but it's okay. Um, so understanding how to build a lineup is only half of the battle is what I'm telling you. The next thing that you need to understand is what do you have to do? What do you have to do in order to win with those lineups that you have created? Um, this comes back to understanding how those cards play. I would strongly recommend for anybody trying to build a winning lineup that they understand how all those cards play in their lineup. As you guys know, I have played all these cards. I have been around Frag for an incredibly long time. And it kind of helps you in this sense, you know? Which this commander. Our whole team is respawned. Our meta cards will do their job. Back to the attack. in this particular style now we're gonna go back into our lineup building boom we're back now let's say I want to build a lineup that doesn't have just meta cards because meta cards can get boring because meta right now is very much about blot rushing um, honestly if I wanted to switch out Lucha and put a different card in I could because blot is that good blot rush with BB heal nasty nasty combo this leads us into the next part of building your lineup. You want to understand the combos that are on the field of play. So, for instance, let's say I don't want to run Duncan, but I want to run a good card who's not meta but has combo potential. I would put Sombrero in. Sombrero is one of those cards, as he was listed, a card that's outside of meta but has good combo potential. So I want to put him in. Let's say I want to keep my blot in, but I don't really feel like running Lucha. Well, I'd look through my cards, thinking, thinking, thinking. So I'm replacing my tank. I do have a pseudo tank, so we're okay. But I'm replacing my tank for a different card because I want to, I don't know. Let's say I want to kind of throw a wild card in the mix, like, like Rip and Finn. Rip and Finn is going to be a good one here. Rip and Finn has the ability to knock cards off the map. He was listed as a card that's just outside of meta. He is an excellent card for this situation. So, what we're going to do, we're going to hop into a match with this lineup. And we're going to show you, I'm still running a 3-2. Give me one minute while we get in the match, and I'll see you guys in a second. Guys and gals, looks like we have ourselves a match. Now, what we're going to do here, guys, is we're going to remember that Sombrero has combo potential. We have a good defensive fallback thanks to Queen Unicorn. And we're going to sit back here with our boy, Rip and Finn, for a little bit. Why? Because Rip and Finn can do this. That's why. <laughs> and I know what you guys are thinking. Well, how's that not meta? Well, put simply, it's just not. Now, the next thing, guys, with these lineups is you have to understand how those cards play. I said this a little bit in the last one, but we're really going to harp on it here a bit. Knowing how my Rip and Finn's going to play because I really wanted to play something different uh, than the than the typical meta cards which people run whenever they're trophy grinding and such is incredibly important. I'm going to get this little frag on VR real quick and then we're going to switch. We're now switched cards. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to switch to our sombrero. Remember how I said this card's secretly good? It doesn't want people to know about it. It's the combo potential with this card. This card has the ability to send little minions 
to your opponent's side of the field very, very easily. All you gotta do, put a little bit of damage down range, shake your little maracas, and then kill the cards that you'd want to have. The card center to this high field. As stated, this card was listed as just outside of meta. He is still incredibly useful. The just outside of meta cards, guys, you can run two to three of these without really much fear of anything. We're going to pop our BB alt to heal, and we're going to push right up here, and we're going to destroy this tower. I know I am having some de tower damage being issued over there. I'm not worried about it because of the defense I have already set up, which is strong thanks to our good friend and card queen, Unicorn. And as you see, this lineup has been built to be able to do it all on its own without too much assistance from anything across the board. This is incredibly easy to do. As you guys have seen, we destroy another tower. We head over this way. We issue this attack command. Tell Blot, hey Blot, get your butt over here. I want you to come over here and shoot this tower with me. Blot comes here. This tower disappears. Here comes Rip and Finn. Three attack cards that we put in for building a winning lineup, doing exactly what they're supposed to do. This is whenever knowing your cards, knowing how the AI are going to respond, is so important. As you guys know, I'm still getting taking damage, a little bit of damage over on my side of the field, but I really don't have a fear of it. Queen Unicorn and Sombrero are over there. They will deal with it as long as it's not a player-controlled person. I don't have to worry too much about it. Now, you see how that yellow dot appeared? I'm going to come back here and play a little defense. And he is dead. And I'm still, like I said, no real risk of losing. The metal, the lineup that I have built is winning this game without really trying. Now, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to build a 4 1 and we're going to run one more match for you guys. And that'll be it for the video. So I'll bring you guys right back. Alrighty, guys, we are back in deck building here. Now we're gonna throw a curveball in here. We're gonna run a 4-1. That means I'm running four offensive style cards with one defense. Now, if you are going to run one defense, you really only have two options. You have Queen Unicorn or the boss. We're gonna put the boss in for this one because I've used Queen Unicorn in the last two. There. Now what I need to do is I need to think I'm running a 4-1. I want this lineup to feel overwhelming. Now, the idea with the 4-1 is that your offensive push has just so much firepower that your opponent can't stop it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put Lucha Boy in. You could put Hannibal in here. I'm just going to put Lucha in because it is my preference. Hannibal right now is the slightly better card. Keep that in mind, guys. I'm just doing it because I prefer Lucha and he's also a meta card. Now, I also need the ability to get over to his side of the field quickly so that it feels overrun. I'm going to put Ronin in here. Um, and I'm also going to switch out BB. Why am I switching out BB? I know I said how important cancel cards are because I want to put a Slayer card in and I have one in mind. I'm going to put Andromeda in as my Slayer card and this is going to be my lineup. Blot, Ronin, Andromeda, Lucha, the boss. Now, there are some pros that would argue with you right here. You have to run BB. You don't have to run BB. Don't fall into the trap. BB is incredibly useful, and I list him as the best card in the game right now. But the role he is filling is not needed with an offensive lineup like this. I have too much health to work through. The cards will get there quickly, and by the time he's, while well, he's distracted, I'm going to be hitting him with the Andro. Now, what we're going to do, guys, we're going to hop into this match. Get in there. Alrighty, guys, we are here and ready to go. We have our offensive juggernaut lineup, and we're going to switch to our Andrew, our slaying role, and we are just going to send it. We have one mission today, one mission, and that is to send the offense. I saw him coming. I just don't know where he's at. <laughs> the offensive cards that we have picked here have a lot of health. It's going to take my opponent a long time to work through them. Realistically, these cards are just made different. I've said this before with several other cards. These cards are just designed to do their roles incredibly well. As you guys have seen, there goes the tower. My push is still alive. Andro is still alive. This guy's hiding. Don't know why. There's the boss. He has a good defense, at least. And we got him. Still have our offensive push. Respawns are on their way. We're going to issue another attack command. And then what we're going to do, guys, we're just going to keep slaying out with Andro. Andro's goal here is to cause chaos. It really is her only goal to make this guy mad. 
Ronin's on the tower. They're all coming. Here they comes the party, guys. And all we're going to do is slay out. So all we're doing right now, guys, we're slaying out. That was a good alt by his Hannibal. Is it enough? No. We're still alive. Still slaying this kid out. Good use of the boss there to clean us up. Now, our offensive push is not dead. Lucha Boy and Blotman are still over here. And honestly, this poor boss is about to get jumped. Let's hit this attack command and we're going to keep going up this tower. The 4-1 is incredibly useful if you can overrun your opponent. It works very well against a weak defense. That is why your defense is so, so important. Without a strong defense, you're going to find yourself consistently in bad situations. That is why whenever you build your lineup, and you're going to, if you're only going to run one, you always run Queen Unicorn or the boss because they're the only two that can do it solo. Um, I usually run a 3-2, but the 4-1 is effective as you guys just saw. Now, guys, this has been how to build a winning deck 2.0. I hope it helps you guys. Let me know in the comments if any of the tips and tricks that I told you help you out. Um, and let's just review everything real quick. You have your meta cards, which you have 10 of. You have the cards that are just outside of meta, which you also have 10 of. And you have the good cards that you can kind of throw in for place. Anytime you build a lineup, you must start with your defense. Your defense is super important. Um, without the defense, you will not be able to recover whenever your push dies. Because eventually, your push is going to die. Um, second thing you need to understand with this is you need to have a cancel card or a slayer card the cancel cards bb and cypher and the slayer card andro is really your real bet there you need a pseudo tank either ronin or blot most people are going to run blot because blot is that good right now second best card in the game um, bb being the best whenever you build that lineup and let's say you don't want to run the meta cards you can put in a card that's just outside of meta, or you can put in a good card as long as your other cards are strong enough to consistently win now with all that being said, guys, one more thing. Knowing the cards you're playing will help you also. If you know the cards you're playing, you can beat somebody who is running a meta lineup more often than not whenever they do not know the cards they are playing, even if their cards are better. That is how you build a winning lineup. That is how you win games in Frag. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to like, comment, subscribe down there, and I will see you legends next time.